Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Welcome back to another Monster Hobbies Model Car Show and Shine video. So we've got a really special treat today. We are going to be taking a look at the Laurel and Hardy 1925 Model T Roadster. Now this is going to be a two-part video. The first one we're going to take a look at how my dad built the video and in the second video coming up maybe tomorrow we are going to be taking a look at how I built the Model T. So without further ado let's go down to the bench and see the video for this week. Now here's my take on the Laurel and Hardy Model T. I did use a different kit from the one supplied. My friend James actually gave me a Laurel and Hardy Model T kit, so I just used the figures because I was building this one for the Museum of the Highwood, and I knew I was going to end up inheriting my dad's Model T with uh, Laurel and Hardy, the one we saw last video. And what I wanted to do was make this one different, because what's the point of having Laurel and Hardy in the same Model T's? It's just really a comparison of my skills versus my dad's. So I was watching one of the old silent films, and Laurel and Hardy, I think the flick is called Big Business. But they were Christmas tree salesmen, and they come up to this guy's house in this very truck. And they try to sell him a Christmas tree, and he's not interested in it. And uh, they end up breaking a little on his house, and he rips a piece off their Model T. And it's a very funny film. And uh, it goes on like that. So I was making this for the Museum of the Highwood, because we were going to have a Laurel and Hardy night. Oh, and I'll just stop the story for a second. See how close my rear tire is to the fender? That's actually how they're supposed to go on the real Model Ts. Because like I was saying in the previous video, this axle goes straight up and down when it hits a bump. It doesn't uh, turn or anything. So this little area here will not get hit by the tire. Whereas in the front you do need the space because these are turning. So if it's too close it's going to scrape on the bottom of the fender. Or the front of the fender. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I made this up for the museum. And I didn't put a windshield in it. That's why you can see everybody's so nice and clear. And uh, I was in a bit of a rush to put this together, but I did a really good job of what I had in the time I had. Now, like I was saying in the previous video, I do actually have it so that you can remove the characters, and I made their arms in a position, let's just get Stanley here, where they could hold on to the wheel with one hand, and their other hand was free. Unlike the way my dad built it, where both hands are holding the wheel, you cannot get them out of my dad's car. But on this one, I designed it so that you could actually switch positions or pull them out and put them into different Model Ts. Now, I also used the Citadel Games Workshop paints, so I was able to, like, give the clothing more depth. Now, on Stanley here, I use black bands on the hands. It's got the same white shirt and the black tie and the green vest, gray pants and the bowler cap, and I also painted in his eyes, so he looks a little more realistic. I do believe they do look a little bit big now. But overall, the figures are quite simplistic. They're almost molded into shape, with the arms being the free agent. But again, ends up looking really nice. So yeah, that is my rendition of it. And again, I'm gonna have to be careful because I when I built this for the museum, I was kind of running out of time. So the body is not actually glued on because my black paint actually ran a little bit under here. And I was going to correct it, but I never got around to actually finishing this. So there's that motor with the big tall spark plugs. I did not paint the updraft carburetor because I'm not sure if, if Ford painted over the top of those or whatever. Because Henry Ford, it was like, you can have any color as long as it's black. But I don't know really the depth. But I did look at this one on the internet and got all my pictures for it. And that's why I knew about the rear axle going up and down like that. And the steel bands around here for your wheels. The tire went on the band and then you could actually bolt the band onto the spoke part of it. Sort of a safety feature back in the day. One thing I also learned is that... They used plate glass in the windshields, but because when you got into an accident, plate glass just breaks off into sheets, it's not too safe, that right around this time, 1925, 
they started to actually experiment with the safety glass that would uh, break into lines and whatever, and the side glass being tempered would break into little pellets instead of sheets, which can really cut a person up. So here's one thing I wanted to show on Oliver Hardy, and that is with his little bowler cap, I noticed in the pictures that it's not like he's got no hair showing here. Uh, Mr. Hardy actually had his hair come out a little bit on top of that bowler cap. There we go. So I painted that in very carefully with the brush, as you can see here. Gave him his eyebrows and his eyes and his little mustache. Painted him with the black suit, just like my dad did, but I gave him a red tie instead of the blue one. And here's my Model T from up and underneath. I did not paint the oil pan and the transmission pan with the silver like my dad did. I do believe they are all painted black because the Ford would have just painted this in a big fat hurry, you know? <laughs> so, but again, I could be wrong on that. I actually do think the pan was metal steel or something, so it might have just been exposed. But at any rate, this is how I did it underneath. I painted the floors with black because, again, I think this would have been assembled and then painted as one thing. I don't think it's uh, wood underneath like how my dad has it. But again, I'm not 100% sure. We need somebody like Jay Leno to lift this up on his hoist. Take a look underneath. Well, I really hope you enjoyed checking out our versions of the 1925 Model T Roadster with Laurel and Hardy. What a great combination of comedians those guys were. If you haven't seen any of their movies, you got to check them out. They made silent films as well as talkies. And that was really cool. Say, do you want to get some model kits of your own to build and collect and paint up and have fun with? Well, if you do, check out what we have for sale at www.monster-hobbies.ca today. We got some really cool things, lots of cars from the 50s and other eras. I'm sure you really want to check them out by clicking on the link that'll be coming up here, as well as checking out our website right here on my t-shirt. Also, if you really love watching these videos and want to continue supporting us here on YouTube, you can click that join button and for as little as $3 a month, you can help support us. And what I'd really love to do is See, I've inherited all these model cars from my dad, and I also have my own collection of model cars. And I think, you know, instead of these things just disappearing, you know, in, into the annals of history, you know, as time progresses, what I'd really love to do is show these models to the world outside of YouTube and all the rest. I want to build a museum that uh, really showcases my work and my dad's work. Now, my dad did pass away in 2019, so it's kind of sad I can't show him this. But this is sort of my goal, to make this museum in honor of my dad and, of course, incorporate my models. So it's going to have, like, the concept is to have dioramas from different time periods. So right now I'm showing a lot of cars from, like, the beginning of, of cars until the 20s and 30s and whatnot. My dad sort of built the early stuff and I built the later stuff but interestingly enough my dad only built the uh, 1932 Chevy he never built any of the 32 Fords so I've built those so like I'm saying I can make a lot of street scenes and, and things and I have figures that are like 124 scale and all the rest it'll be a really cool museum and I can't really do that on my own so with your help with just three dollars a month depending on how many people donate this three dollars a month we could really get together and build a really cool museum. So that's my thoughts on all of that. So if you enjoyed this video, again, click that thumbs up button. Also, if you've built any of these models, we'd like to see them over on our Facebook page. So until next time, everybody, thanks for watching the videos and happy model building.